I'm talking about taking the entire visceral experience of cooking and eating and putting it online. We're just call it minimalist. Drop the. It's cleaner that way. I've been making pasta with garlic oil and anchovies for, I don't know, 30 years. And in Rome, they've been making it for hundreds. But a few years ago, I started messing around with the ratio, the balance of the dish. And we're going to take a look at that. This is one of those sauces that you can make in the time that it takes the pasta to cook. So I'm going to start. I have boiling water here. I'm going to start cooking the pasta. But this gets into the discussion of the ratio. When I started making this dish with arugula, I was using a pound of pasta, two cups of arugula. Now I'm using half a pound of pasta, six cups of arugula. So big difference. Um, it starts the same way. And that is with a fair amount of olive oil in a warm, not super hot pan. When it starts to thin out a little bit, and you can see it's less viscous, or is it more viscous? When it's thinner, sliced garlic, as much as you have the patience for and as much as you want. You're going to cook it until it's golden, not brown, but golden, and it's going to become sweet anyway. Two optional ingredients. One, anchovies. Again, as many as you want. I happen to love them. And two, chili flakes. You don't need these, but they're nice. A good, a good pinch. So you want a slow sizzle here. When the pan's, this is a little too fast. So when the pan is, um, when the oil's sizzling, the garlic is little bubbles around the garlic, a little noise. You want this to cook about as gently as it can. And even then, it's only going to take five minutes to be done. The anchovies will start to break up. They're already starting to break up. The garlic will first turn ivory and then yellowish. You are dealing here with about the strongest flavors you possibly could. Garlic, which we are going to cook until it's mellow, but if you're not careful, you're not. Anchovies, which we'll get to in a second, but highly salty and not to everybody's taste, obviously. And that's why the best green for this is arugula, because that also packs some punch. A word about anchovies, you absolutely want them packed in olive oil or packed in salt. All right. Despite getting off to a slow start, this is almost done. Now the garlic is um, soft enough to be floppy. See, that's done. It's tender enough to be floppy, the technical term. Pasta you want a little bit underdone, still a little crunch inside, but just a touch. We're going to reserve some of the pasta cooking water, which is almost always a good idea, but in this case, pretty much essential. The idea behind saving a little water is that if the pasta looks dry, it doesn't look saucy enough to you, you can add a little of the pasta cooking water. But this is well sauced, actually, so the cooking water thing is not important. The pasta continues to cook as you're draining it, as you put it back in the pan. So even though it was a little bit underdone a minute ago when I took it out of the water, not that there's any reason for you to believe me, it is now absolutely perfect. So now we're going to put the pasta into the arugula. And this is the original dish right here. Adding a little bit of arugula for color, for crunch, for flavor. That's kind of an American innovation, or shall we say, an innovation of the 90s or early 2000s. Adding a lot of arugula, that's more recent. Now, the arugula, of course, is going to wilt as soon as we start tossing. It's basically cooking. So this amount of greens is really what makes this different. Um, it's not a classic pasta dish. It's certainly not a salad. It's a, it's a sasta. You know, instead of using the greens as a kind of wimpy little garnish, we're really integrating them into the dish here. You've got all those bold flavors, the chilies, anchovies garlic, although albeit quite mild. Really strong greens in the arugula, the mellow chewy pasta. It's a perfect updating of a classic dish, in my opinion. Mm -hmm.